What up, watch peeps? So today I'm going to be looking at a uh, Boulder Odyssey in bronze, but I, I think at this point everybody's seen this watch, you've seen enough reviews of it, so rather than just doing a straightforward review, we're going to have some fun with it. We're going to try some different patina methods and uh, see what we can make this bronze do. So Boulder is a very cool company. They've been putting out a lot of really cool stuff lately. The Boulder Venture, the titanium feel watch, started in quartz, and then they made a... Uh, version with an automatic version with a Seiko NH35 that's very cool and I'm actually going to be getting my hands on the uh, the latest Boulder Venture the Field Medic that is the one with the um, Mecha Quartz chronograph movement in it so I'm really excited about that I'll have the Panda dial should be pretty sweet thanks to El Jefe for sending that one in but uh, yeah let's get started I'm Pete and we are chilling with watches yo All right, first things first, wrist check. I am wearing my Zelos Hammerhead Titanium with the Meteorite dial. Shoosh, that's a mouthful. Love this watch, very cool. I don't know if they'll ever be making these again, but all right, I'm gonna go get some stuff to set up and we're gonna be doing some experimenting today. It's science, yo. All right, so what we have here is the Boulder Odyssey. Now this is the bronze cased version. It's also available in steel, on a bracelet even. And we'll get into a proper review later, but um, first we're gonna have some fun and play around with this thing. As you can see this one has already started to develop a little bit of a patina in the brownish tones it's taken. You can kind of see the original, the beautiful bronze color it was on the bottom of the crown there. Now, I, I could restore this to that original brown by dipping in lemon juice for a few minutes and um, basically starting from scratch, but I, I don't think that's gonna be necessary for what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna force patina this guy a little bit, and there's a few different ways to do that. Um, the method I like is called vapor, is a vapor method. Um, you can do it with an egg. I've hard boiled an egg, smashed it, stuck it in the bag, um, and that does okay, but it doesn't do much more than what you've got here. It, it, it's a very subtle um, brown tones that you'll get in the patina as opposed to uh, some of the more dramatic effects you can get. Now, if you do this vapor method with ammonia, you will get some serious patina. You get those crazy blues like the Statue of Liberty, even some blacks in there. That's a little too much for me. I'm just gonna use um, vinegar. So this will be the vinegar vapor method of forced patina. And all you do is put some vinegar in the bottom of the glass doesn't need to be much you'll see what i have just in the bottom there now that other thing in there that's just another little um canister that's what the watch is going to set on top of so the watch head does not need to come into um contact with the vinegar at all it'll i'm going to seal it up and it'll be the vapor so uh first i got this on a barton's rubber i, I thought that green just looked killer with this dial and bezel really brought out the tones there so first things first, we're going to take the strap off. I really need a bronze buckle to go with that. Now what we're going to do is set the watch on top of this other container I have here and seal it up. And then we're just going to leave it for, I don't know, I'll probably check it in a couple hours, check it again in. Usually four hours I find gives a good uh, a noticeable difference in the patina. So let's see what we get. We'll check back. I wanted to do, uh, give you a little look at the watch first so you could have an idea of what it looked like starting. And uh, we'll check back in a few hours. All right, we are a couple of hours in, maybe two and a half hours. Let's take a look and see if we're getting anything. Looking through the glass, it doesn't look like we're getting much progress. My guess is because it was already relatively patinaed. You can see some stuff starting to happen up there in some of the crevices. Oh yeah, there's, there's more patina happening on the backside there. Most of this is just gonna come off though. It's still wet, but you can see what it starts to do after a while. I've never really gotten these uh, deep green tones from um, using just vinegar before. So we're going to put her back in there. Let's go face down this time, see what we get. 
We're gonna give it some more time and see what else we can get. Gross, huh? All right, we'll check back in a little bit. Actually, you know what? Screw that. Let's take it out. Let's put it in ammonia for a little bit. Let's see if we can get some serious patina happening here. My buddy Casper over at Ghost Watches is getting this next. So uh, this is like a fun little prank to play on him. So Casper had some cool things he wants to do with this watch as well. So yeah. So actually, I, this is not going to hurt him at all. I think this actually will help what he wanted to do. Now, I know you really got to leave this stuff. Oh, that stinks. You really got to leave this stuff overnight to get a a crazy amount of patina, which I'm not doing. I just don't have the time to do that. So we're going to see what we get out of this. All right, we'll check back in a bit. Okay guys, so it's been a couple hours since I switched this over to ammonia and wait till you see this thing. This is freaking awesome. Oh Casper, you're in for a treat. So can you see the colors that are starting to develop on? Now a lot of that is moisture and it's gonna wipe away, but I'm leaving it on there so you can see what you can do with forced patina. Now these are the colors I don't find as attractive as the mellow browns, but for the purpose of making a video, you know, I wanted to show you what's possible and, you know, something a little more dramatic. Crazy, huh? All right, give me a minute. I'm gonna um, rinse it off, wash, wash it up. Now we'll probably lose a bunch of this color in that process, but let's see what's left after. Okay, so here it is, cleaned up, dried off just a crazy patina right now i've actually left the watch overnight in ammonia by accident i came in the next morning and it was freaking black these colors it's not something i want to do but you know for the experiment it is really cool i don't know that i would want to wear a watch that looked like this you can even see it on some of the bronze markers on the bezel everything still works fine the bezel action is still really good crown still screws down real smooth this actually has really nice bezel action um i'm not going to do a proper whole review on this we'll take a couple measurements and i'll share my thoughts some things i like some things i don't like um it's a really well put together watch it's solid um because it's solid it wears a little top heavy because it's a watch that does not have a bracelet let's get a quick measurement of the weight on this so the watch head alone is 153 grams. That's a lot of weight when you don't have a bracelet available to counterbalance it. So I, on wrist, this felt really top heavy to me. That was one of the things I, I didn't like a whole lot about it. One of the things I love are these lugs. If you, when you're just holding this watch and you're feeling it, this smooth transition from the side to the tops of these lugs, these angles, it just has a soft, really nice feeling. I like the way it looks, almost a little samurai, but just really smooth. It looks sharp, but feels soft. That's one of my favorite things about this watch. One of the things I do not like is the Rehaut with the helium escape valve and the triple lock crown. It's just such a blatant copy of the Rolex Sea Dweller that is completely unnecessary. This is a great watch. It can stand on its own. It doesn't need that. In fact, it doesn't need the helium escape valve at all. I mean, none of us are saturation divers. We're not spending any time in a bell. It's just not necessary. I wonder if they could have slimmed the watch down at all by getting rid of that and by just putting a basic rehot. I don't know. Even if they couldn't and it kept the same weight, I think it would be a lot cooler of a watch without those things. I think it could have stood on its own just fine. Uh, the case shape and everything, I, I just really love. And I like a chunky watch. I'm not afraid to wear a chunky watch. I'm okay with that. And, and that is one of the things about this design that I really liked. I think it looked really cool in steel. So real quick, this is a... I mean, I'm getting... Well, let's see. I got a crown guard stuck in there. Somewhere around 45 millimeter watch. It, it's a big boy. Lug to lug almost 53 thickness 
Yeah, it looked like 16.4, and a half with the crystal. Big old crown. I love the crown. Nine millimeter crown. And that's about as big as you can go. I, I know some people have tried to push watches to 10 millimeters and it starts to look ridiculous, but nine is, uh, nine still works. I love the uh, knurling on this crown. It's very simple, almost that grenade pattern that you see. Very cool. I'm not sure this watch works on this green strap anymore, but on leather, it would probably look awesome. So let's take a quick look at it side by side with my Zelos, another chunky watch. Now the Zelos is titanium, and I think that resolves a lot of the problems I had with wearing this watch. You lose a lot of the weight. The Zelos is probably actually a thicker watch. 17, what did I say this was? 16 and a half. So yeah, the Zealous is actually a thicker watch, but it's a much better wear because of the weight. This Zealous actually is a the only one of its kind with the black hands, the titanium meteorite dial. The silver hands just disappeared on that silver dial, so I had mine done with black hands, and it looks fantastic. So here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. And as you can see, I don't find the size unwearable at all. It's the weight. When I move my wrist like this, I can feel the momentum of it bobbling around on top. So I'd really love to try the steel version of this on bracelet. So yeah, I mean, other than that, it's a really great watch. I love when you start to get even just the dull brown patina. The contrast against the rose gold hands and markers on the dial, which have that almost like polished bronze look, I think makes for a really great look. The handset choice is fantastic. The dial, the texture, fantastic. Even the loom color is great. It really works with the bronze. And this is what you get with a little forced patina. So this was uh, ammonia vapor on top of vinegar vapor. The vinegar will give you a much subtler effect. You see just in an hour, two hours, we got all this from ammonia. And that's without ever contacting the ammonia. Just ammonia vapors condensing on the watch, suspended above it. Pretty cool. Now it smells like ammonia in here. Keep the loom. The loom on this thing is pretty dang good. I mean, it is bright. Let's see, here it is uh, next to the Zelos. The Zelos, I, man, I really usually don't like two-tone loom, but they just do it well. Look at the depth on the dial of the Zelos. But yeah, I mean, the brightness that they have achieved on this boulder is the same on par with Zelos quality loom. Looks fantastic. Those are two torchy watches. All right, let's flip the camera around and wrap this up. So that's it guys, the Boulder Odyssey in bronze, green dial with a mad patina on it. So what do you guys think of patina? Have any of you ever tried forced patina? Did you like the results, not like the results? Uh, also, what'd you think of the uh, Boulder Odyssey? Is this a watch you would wear? Boulder's making a lot of really cool watches. I'd love to get my hands on some more of them. All right, before I let you guys go, sneaker check, I'm wearing my Jordan 1 Lowe's. I had red shorts on. What else are you going to wear? All right, I'm out. If it's not too much trouble, like, subscribe, and come back next time. Peace.